In the last video, we discussed about Slack to Teams migration. Let's take a close look into how to migrate Slack channels as Teams and preserve Slack owner and membership as Teams owners and membership. Also, we are going to explore a lot of advanced configuration options available to customize your migration needs. Let's look into first module to migrate channels as Teams. Here, you can make the new Slack connection. It will redirect to the default browser. You can provide your credentials here and then click allow. And when we return back to the tool, the connection will be established. Now you can choose your connection and click on next. Now Slack is configured in the tool. This is a one time process. If you establish the connection from next time onwards, you can choose your existing connection and can simply click on next. The second step is meant to connect to Office 365 tenant. Here is where you will establish a connection to your Office 365. Similarly, you can click on add new destination connection. You have two options, whether you can uh, input your credentials here or you can click on browser authentication mode if MFA is enabled. It will redirect to your default browser and then you can use your credentials to sign in into Teams. Since I already have a connection here, I am proceeding with existing connection. Here is where every Slack channel in source will appear here. So by default, every public channels will show here and also the private channels that you have access to. We can migrate all at one go or else we can optimize our uh, migration speed by choosing chunkwise, chunkwise process. We can select the, the batch of channels to be exported in single go and then we can schedule the migration. We also have advanced options like uh, to customize the uh, migration requirements. For example, I can change the privacy level of a channel from public to private if it is required. And also I can rename the uh, team uh, instead of business development, I can give it some other name so that uh, it will be created with that name in destination. So I can change my uh, display name, I can change my group aliases of the team. So what will happen now is this Slack channel business iPhone development will be created as a business development team in the destination and every content from business development Slack channel will be moved to general channel belonging to this team. So here is we are migrating Slack channel as a team and by default every content will be moved to general channel inside this team. So I can click on channel settings and I can even configure my options here. I can view description and then I can choose what to do with my conversations. Uh, is it required to be migrated or can be skipped? And what to do with my content? Do, do the files need to be migrated or not? I can choose my options and I can hit next to migrate the selected channels as teams. We have user and group mappings options. If there are users in the destination tenant who are no longer available, we can use user and group mapping screen to map them so that instead of files getting failed, they will be migrated with the metadata information of the mapped user. You can search for any service account and you can map with all unresolved users to automatically handle each and every user who are no longer exist in destination environment. You have an option to search at source and destination like one-on-one -on -one mapping. For example, we can search one of our user in source that we want to completely replace with following user at the destination. So like this, we can do one-on-one -on -one mappings if we wanted to replace a particular user from source with the destination user. So this mapping will reflect in user and groups, permissions and item metadata if we do one-on-one -on -one mapping. However, if we do all unresolved users mapping like uh, with a particular single user, this all unresolved user setting only applicable to file metadata. So this setting won't reflect in permissions. So it is safer to use all unresolved to always map with any of the service account. So this information is used to preserve metadata information. Uh, since sometimes files may fail to migrate if there is no uh, user exist who belonging to it. 
if you wanted to replace a user completely to reflect in permissions and owners and membership information we can do one on one mapping so this is a uh, glimpse about mapping screen and then when we are at the global setting screen so here is how you define your migration for example if it is a first time migration we can choose item exist behavior as don't copy and if we are doing the incremental or delta migration and uh, we can have the multiple options here to choose from if you choose copy if newer the source files will be copied to destination only if they are newer that means either they are modified or created newly in source only those will be migrated if you choose copy and replace so every file from source will be copied forcefully to destination and the items in destination will be replaced so depending upon your needs you can choose the item exchange behavior so for now we are choosing don't copy because this is our first time migration and similarly we have some other options so these are the major options like in this page and uh, we also have one more additional option do you want to append the following header to each conversation so this is uh, like for example to identify the conversations or messages where they came from whether they are manually created by the users in the destination or it was performed by a tool so to give that identity we have we will append this following message to each and every messages that we migrated using the tool if you don't want you can skip it if you wanted to have below information appended to each migrated message you can turn this on either we can migrate in normal mode or we can choose turbo mode turbo mode is uh, very useful if you wanted to migrate data at faster rates and also to minimize sharepoint throttling effect we will cover this more details on this turbo mode in our uh, upcoming videos and uh, you can also have the ability to schedule your migrations using this option so you can name your schedule and you can choose your interval it can be hourly daily weekly or it's a one time job so depending upon your requirements you can schedule the migration and give it a time where you want it to run and then you can start the migration so to immediately start the migration we can turn off scheduling and we can simply click on next in the review setting page we can review each and every configuration that we made so far and then we can start our migration so the job successfully created page will come if everything went fine we can click on view job info and you can see the already the selected channels are being scheduled so we have selected three slack channels out of 100 and then the three slack channels are about to start in a minute so once the migration started they will be moved to in progress and once they finished they will be moved to completed state so it looked like this when it started so it will move from scheduled to in progress when the migration of the individual channel started you can monitor the progress by simply clicking on the migration icon and then you will see the status so currently the running notifications will appear here and the details of success error warning will be shown as as below of the migration started if you want a excel style report to investigate the errors if any or else to re review what got success you can simply click on session report tab and here it is where all the data will appear once the migration uh, has started once the migration completed all the channels will be moved to completed state and here is what the report looks like once it's completed you have the summary tab where you can uh, filter the reports like uh, for example if i wanted to see the errors in the report i click and click on errors there are no errors here if you wanted to see the success or and all the things i can select all and i can review the details so we will come in detail about how to analyze the report in the upcoming videos and uh, uh, this is how we schedule the flag to teams migration thank you